In celebration of our neighbors to the north, the middle grade library will be highlighting Canadian authors and their books over the next several weeks. We kick off this edition of Goodnight Greenwich by listening to Canadian author Nancy MacDonald read aloud from her book, The Boy from Berlin. The Boy from Berlin is Nancy's first middle grade novel and is loosely based on her husband's escape from Germany during Adolf Hitler's rise to power in 1938. Nancy lives in Stratford, Ontario, Canada, and began her career working as a journalist on, number, on a number of television programs including Canada, AM, and Marketplace. She enjoys performing Shakespeare in the theater and works at Fanfare Books. Nancy is working on her sequel to The Boy from Berlin, which is due out this spring. Hello, Greenwich. My name is Nancy McDonald, and this evening I'm going to read you the first chapter from my book, Away from Berlin. Berlin, April 1938. Something was definitely afoot. Most of the servants, including Nanny, had been given the evening off. Just Ursula, the maid, and Marta, our cook, remained on duty. I couldn't remember when that had ever happened. That's why I crept down from the nursery, leaving Peter and Ellen doing their homework. I planned to use my spy skills to find out what was going on. Mama didn't see me. I hid in the shadows on the landing, but I had a clear view of her through the banister. I looked through the binoculars Aunt Charlotte had helped me make from two empty toilet paper rolls. Mama stood in the drawing room smoking a cigarette. As always, she looked elegant. Her curly chestnut hair was swept back from her face and she wore a black fitted dress with a red belt and matching high heeled shoes. But even from a distance, I could see she was agitated. She paced back and forth across the Turkish carpet. And every few minutes, she looked at her wristwatch, the gold one father had made her himself, a gift for their first wedding anniversary. The doorbell rang. It was so loud, I almost jumped. I shrank back deeper into the dark and watched Ursula cross the front hall, her shoes clicking on the shiny parquet floor. Ursula was new. She always did as Mama asked, but her attitude was faintly superior, almost as if she was better than Mama. As she opened the front door, cool air rushed in. It had that sharp, fresh smell that promised rain. Good evening, Fraulein Charlotte, she greeted my aunt pleasantly enough, then self-consciously patted her thin blonde hair, which was tidily braided in coils and pinned securely. Aunt Charlotte, Mama hadn't mentioned she was coming. Maybe we could play hide and seek after she and Mama visited like we'd done on Saturday. I adored my aunt, we all did. Mama called her a maverick. I wasn't exactly sure what that meant, but she didn't particularly care what other people thought of her. And she was the only woman I knew who regularly wore trousers. Tonight she must have come directly from work though, because she had on a severe gray suit and she looked serious. Good evening, Ursula, Aunt Charlotte had a throaty voice that commanded attention. Ursula stood a bit straighter. Frau Avendor has been waiting for you. At the sound of the doorbell, Mama had put out her cigarette and come to the drawing room doorway. She hugged Aunt Charlotte and kissed her on both cheeks. She turned to Ursula, thank you, you may have the rest of the evening off and tell Cook she can go too, as soon as she's laid out dinner. Very good, Madam, I'll be back at 11 o'clock. Ursula turned, smiled slyly and disappeared with Aunt Charlotte's coat and hat. Mama and my aunt walked arm in arm into the drawing room Mama slid the door firmly closed behind them. Now what? I wouldn't be able to hear what they were saying from where I was hiding. But with the servants out, father still at work, and Peter and Ellen safely on the third floor, I decided to risk eavesdropping. I crept down the stairs, careful to avoid the few creaky spots, and crouched down silently, my ear pressed against the door. I was in luck. They talked quietly, but by concentrating hard, I could just make out their words. Elsa, I've had a long day and I'm tired. What's so important you couldn't tell me over the telephone? We're leaving tonight, Lottie. Rafat says we can't wait any longer. My heart started to pound. I hoped Mama and Aunt Charlotte wouldn't hear it. Tonight? Do the children know? No, we didn't want them to say anything to their friends. Once Rafat gets home, we'll have dinner and tell them. We'll pack up a few things and be gone before the servants get back. Mama paused. Lottie, for the last time, will you come with us? Aunt Charlotte sighed. We've been through this, Elsa. I can't leave Berlin now. My work is too important. Even if I could, where would I get a job? Where would I live? 
You know you can stay with our friends until you find something. It isn't safe here anymore, Lottie. We've already lost our citizenship, and Rafat thinks it won't be long before we lose the house and everything in it. And for you, it's even more dangerous. I frown. What was so dangerous about working as a secretary in an automobile factory? Why tonight, Elsa? Silence. Then Mama, her voice lowered, said, Yesterday, Peter had a new teacher, a Herr Vogel. He wore a Nazi party uniform. He made Peter's friend, you know him, Miriam Hirsch's son, Solly, stand at the front of the room while he pointed out how he was different because he was Jewish. My aunt gasped. How long before that happens to Peter or Ellen or little Heinz? I heard the catch in Mama's voice. And now that Peter is 10, it would draw attention if he didn't join the Deutschen book. We can't stay in Germany. What did Mama mean? Peter couldn't wait to be part of the German youth and go hiking and camping with the older boys. Mama paused and when she spoke again, it was in her most persuasive voice. Berlin has changed, Lottie, you know this. Nazi soldiers strutting in the streets, Hitler youth swearing allegiance to that man, more restrictions for Jews every week. Silence as my aunt absorbed this. But your friends, Elsa, they're taking in the five of you already, said Aunt Charlotte slowly. They won't want a sixth. Don't worry, I'll be all right here until you're settled in your new home. Then I promise I'll join you. You must, Lottie. Your life depends on it. I can't live without you, and neither can the children. You know how they treasure you. At that, both Mama and my aunt choked back sobs. The grandfather clock struck just as a motor car turned into the drive. Father was home. I scurried back up the stairs to the third floor, my mind in a whirl. If you're interested in finding out what happens to Kafer and his family, you can get Boy from Berlin at any online bookseller, including Amazon and uh, Barnes and Noble. And if you like the story, watch for the sequel, One Boy's War. It's coming out in the spring. Good night, Greenwich, for now.